Okay, whoops. I'm going to uh, call to order the Sustainability and Community Enhanc Enhancement Ad Hoc Committee today, Monday, February 3rd. Can I have a roll call there? Certainly, Member Bishop. Here. Member Sorensen. Here. Member Twitchell. Here. Uh, Co-Chair Renner, unfortunately homesick with the flu, and Co-Chair Perrier. Here. You have a quorum. Super. Um, consideration for the December 4th, uh, 2019 uh, Sustainability and Community Enhancement Ad Hoc Committee Special Meeting Minutes. Do I have a motion to approve or any comments? Yeah. So moved. Second. Any comments? Oh, do you oh, You can vote? do voice vote. Oh, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Aye, perfect. Uh, we actually have an audience, which is very exciting. Um, <laughs> are, <laughs> very exciting. We love you. Um, wow. Are there any, um, <laughs> any non-agenda people out there Perfect. Okay. Um, in which case, we'll stick with the order of business as it is. Scooting down to Sunrise Park and Beach Erosion Update. Thanks, Ron. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Salski. I'm the Executive Director for Lake Bluff Park District. I have Commissioner Emily Lane, uh, who's on our park board, as well as uh, a liaison on our friends of Lake Bluff Parks. So if there are some questions, we can always go back and forth. Uh, Emily's still getting the lay of the land of the park district, and so she's doing a great job trying to learn as much as possible. So thanks for uh, inviting us to give you an update because uh, obviously it is uh, a prize jewel here in Lake Bluff, and it's been identified in our community-wide surveys over the last 10 years is our that we've done surveys uh, as our number one asset facility whether it's facilities parks and so uh, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of the erosion challenges where we're at and then the damages and then what uh, what we're doing about it so uh, to start off is and if this goes back to 2013 where the park district organized a beach committee that provided uh, some uh, recommendations and at that time it was more of a master plan high level master plan that didn't really um, we, we were focused on the um, lake levels at what they were at the time and so as we know the lake levels fluctuate and then in 2014 we had a large storm that uh, impacted the breakwater groin area by North Shore just north of the North Shore uh, Water Reclamation District and so we had to put some armor stone in that area and then we also started to see some damage along what I'd call the pathway leading to the North Shelter and over by the playground and so uh, and then 2019 after higher lake levels uh, some some damage some more erosion the board uh, engaged with AECOM we did an RFP process to look at uh, to bring on a coastal engineer to look at what can we do what are some of the uh, options for the board to take a look at in terms of maintaining the level of erosion that it's at and what would we need to do and so they uh, uh, they presented our board and roughly it's uh, if we wanted to do everything which was would would be to enlarge the breakwaters uh, as well as enclose them and do some work on the North Beach more revetment uh, to avoid some potential um, distress on the bluff is roughly about five million dollars and so uh, at that time we decided uh, the the boards came to the village board and the park district boards started to talk about what it's a community issue so how do we come together and we talk about this and mm -hmm. so a beach erosion ad hoc committee was created between the two agencies uh, and Paula Mew is that chair and so uh, 
We have great representation. AECOM has presented to the committee, as well as the North Shore Water Reclamation District has been uh, involved uh, with those discussions as well. And I think it is important to note that uh, the, the North Shore Water Reclamation District contributed to the original engineering study, uh, which was uh, great that they did because they're concerned about their building. And so uh, everything's on our website online. We refreshed our our web page so that you can pull up those reports and, and, and a video of the uh, of AECOM and their report to the board. And so they've met twice. We're hoping for one more meeting where they would outline some what projects, kind of the prioritizing the projects because five million is a lot of money, and what are some funding options. So. Uh, so this, this topic's been going on even well before I've been here 12 years. I mean, back in the 90s with the slough on the South Beach, as well as uh, some uh, funding that we received from Senator Garrett on one of the breakwaters uh, in front of the uh, beach house. So this has been going on, I mean, even well before that. And so um, there's, a, there's a couple things that the, the board, that's under consideration with the board, and we're waiting for more data we're trying to gather as much information before the board really outlines next steps. And so, you know, do we begin the permitting process uh, for any type of uh, improvement? Uh, do we look at construction drawings? Uh, do we uh, really look at what's called the pilot project uh, 1122, which uh, you may have heard about, which is uh, bringing in clean sand onto the beach, uh, and, and that's going to be a discussion with the board, as well as uh, discuss with the North Shore Water Reclamation District on, on uh, funding options as well. And do we just do some of the projects, some of the breakwaters, and not all of them? Uh, wait a few years for the lake levels to lower, potentially reduce the cost estimates, because right now, um, the market is cornered because everyone's looking for um, uh, projects uh, because of the, the high lake levels. What it definitely is not an option uh, for the park board is not doing anything. So they are on top of this proactive and we're in a lot of different meetings talking about it, a lot of articles being shared back and forth, um, the great uh, work of the village and the park district working together. So still more to come on the erosion. Now I'll, I'll um, get into the, the damage that occurred on January 11th. And um, so that, that storm produced approximately 14 and a half, 14 and a half foot waves uh, at lake level that had a two foot storm surge. Um, keys out to be about a hundred year wind event and 1% chance of exceedance in any given year. And, and really what AECOM is recommending to us, we're gonna anticipate even with lower lake levels at some point in time, still these storm surges. Mm -hmm. And so that's something for us to be concerned about. Right now, the current estimated damage is about $53,000. We've been getting questions, how are we gonna handle that? And that's not to the parking lot. The parking lot is leased uh, by the North Shore Water Reclamation District from the village. So um, that, is, that is not included in our, our number. This is our number, which doesn't include some of the fall off of that pathway that I was talking about. Uh, so uh, that has to be a discussion. So we'll be submitting that for uh, insurance claim. Uh, and so um, really to, to break down uh, very, really, very quickly, the South Beach revetment held up, and so that's in the, the cove area against the bluff. Uh, there's some distress of uh, that the stone is uh, shifted. The north end of the South Beach, which is right across from the Yacht Club, uh, if you're down there, you can see a lot of sand is gone. Uh, that's almost about $25,000 of sand that we have to bring in. I don't think we're ready to take a look at Armor Stone quite yet. Uh, we talked about the parking lot, um, the Labola area, uh, which uh, is when you head start heading to the north uh, North Beach. Uh, all those uh, timbers have broken up or fallen, so that, that roughly about twenty one thousand dollars for that. 
And then uh, the playground footings uh, are exposed and the guardhouse and restroom building, no issues. We did sandbag that area. And uh, it's just the path that we have to figure out um, because uh, we do use that quite a bit. And so um, what are we doing about the damages? Uh, besides just submitting, you can become a volunteer online, but we're gonna hold four dates, community volunteer dates. February 29th, March 14th, April 25th, May 9th, uh, from 10 to noon. And so there are grants out there that if we can get roughly about 400 volunteer hours that we can bring in some uh, dollars back. So we'll be publishing that. Um, as well as, I think an important thing, is the, the foundation, uh, the Friends of Lake Bluff Parks has set up a page where you can donate uh, online and we'll take donations uh, uh, for any of the damages and we'll know more future improvements as well. So they've done a great job and so we appreciate you allowing us to come out and be able to state that's what we're trying to do. And so you can go online there. Uh, I don't think right now they have uh, any fundraiser plan. There are a couple fundraisers out there related to the, the, um, the Lake Bluff Brewery and on Sundays and dollar of the pint goes uh, back into the beach. So, um, so the friends, they've really stepped up and done a great job. So I ask anybody uh, to consider that way. Uh, other than that, uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown and answer questions. And you said four dates, the 29th of February, March 14th, May 9th, and what was the- I'm sorry, April 25th. Okay. And then- um, Those will be uh, community cleanup days. Now you can go down, you can register online and you can go down there yourself or with whoever, and then we have cones and you can just put uh, some of the, the debris by the cones and then we'll come by and pick those up. Okay. Um, have you considered talking to the people in Lake Forest that went through a similar uh, issue last year, not the 11th, but um, Forest Park, any of those people? Have you cross-pollinated, collaborated with them, maybe even looked into a private-public uh, partnership, how they did it, what the constraints benefits were so we know what the uh, lake forest has done so i have not I, I see lake county at a couple meetings sand management meetings but i have not conversed with them but and then we've talked with all the other agencies up and down uh the um, um the lakefront but have not specifically yet so we're still doing our due diligence yeah might just be worthwhile it's a good getting idea getting in a room with them um, Ron, I have a question about the $5 million quote. Um, I mean, obviously there's no guarantees, but that's building in an estimate of what with climate change or sort of, you know, this should last you 10 years, this should last you 20. I mean, that, again, it's a crystal ball, I know, but I assume there's an assumption that we're going to have significant weather events and unpredictable lake levels. So they feel the, the breakwater should hold a good 30 to 50 years. So, but those with storm surges, those it will anticipate seeing some shifting of any of the armor stone, but uh, it should last a long time, which is where we want, the board wants to get to and the staff is the, the, long, the sustainability of any project. And so that's why we're just careful in making sure we're never, we're, gathering all our facts before yeah. we know did what's they, the right thing to do. Did they suggest that there's X amount that you should have each year for, you know, surges and things will move or, you know, it's a new way of doing business now. So I'm just curious what that, what that looks like. And so I don't know if I understand your question in terms of the actual, so the, the breakwaters. Be, like the five million would be a big capital expense. It'd right? be a big capital expense. However, I'm wondering if, if going forward, um, annual budget, the annual, for the budget, annual for budget, the, yeah, it, if contingency there needs to be, plan, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I would anticipate if we don't do anything, I would anticipate continued fifty 
thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars each year just because what's happening is the waves are just there's nothing to stop the wave action right now so uh it's they're gonna it's gonna steep it's gonna keep coming in it'll take it take the clay take more. and uh start eating away at towards the bluff i'm just trying to so. say i hope we'll take a very conservative approach and build maintenance into the budget even after a big capital yeah that's what spending. actually um uh, member lane and i were, were just talking about so um and how much we spend per year operationally so yeah i, I think that has to be one of the discussions we're, we're going into a planning event uh, planning meeting in end of february so that's part of the discussions in general yeah, and so, I assume insurance is going to cost more <laughs> yeah so what, one of the thoughts that we're looking into is where that path is uh, on the north side is uh, breaking down is do we put some armor stone right in front so um, that we can do some maintenance and a little each year instead of just putting eight thousand to ten thousand dollars worth of sand because we can put sand down in one day and it can be gone the next day so i don't think it's necessarily about the sand as much as um i, I do we do believe the breakwaters are the best to it doesn't solve it lake forest experienced some things even with their breakwaters and highland park and some of the other agencies but something to slow down the waves in the long term would be our best solution. Mm -hmm. How does this affect your um, your plans to do the rest of the beach in the upper level along the park with new steps and new bike racks, et cetera? Is this going to supersede that or? Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit. We don't think it will have any impact. The only thing we want to think about from a timing standpoint, if we were to do any work down at the beach and we have truck traffic or anything like that, do we, do we want to do anything on the, the north entrance, so off of Scranton? So that, that'd be the only thing. But I, I don't see any long-term impact or any impacts on what we're trying to do. We still can go for, and we're hoping to get, yeah, we're, we're, that's a good question. We're hoping to go to, come to the village um, in another two months with that plan. And we won't be bidding that out until we go to the village. We've been working hard on that, so. Sweet. <laughs> Oh, go ahead, Ian. Well, it's a little piggybacking on your questioning, but um, I'm wondering when we're talking about um, protecting the shoreline, how much conversation is there with other agencies around the Great Lakes? Because this is obviously a very widespread problem, and 10 years out, and 20 years out, and 50 <coughs> years out, it's predicted to only become worse. So how far are you looking um, with this $5 million spent? When to potentially do something or? No, how far do you think? I know you, you've kind of answered and said, you know, for 10 to 20 years, but, but what's... No, it, was 30 no, it could be about 30 to 50. Yeah, it's a, 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 and it's not going to solve everything. So, no. and that's what we'd have to caution everyone on that it's, to maintain the levels that we're at so it won't solve an erosion problem because right. the lake's going to go up and down and the climate's going to change and there might be storm surges larger than we're anticipating or the lake levels may stay high for 10 more years we just don't know mm -hmm. but i think the goal is to have a long-term solution so, so sooner than later are you talking with or paying attention to some of the other information oh, yeah. out there, you know, farther down the North Shore? Absolutely. Um, down into Chicago, Indiana, other Great Lakes. So I'm on a committee. It's a sand management working group. I've been on that for now four, four years now, and I chair one of the committees. And so we meet three times a year, so very involved with what everyone's doing. We're constantly talking. So there's, everyone's trying a variety of different ways to, to attack this problem. But some, some don't have, uh, some agencies don't have the issues that maybe we have. It just depends. depends 
so it depends on location yeah. so but no we're it's a constant conversation with all of us so and so where is the sand replenishment plan and is the plan still to bring Waukegan Harbor sand so right now I, I had a meeting that the Army Corps received funding they just received funding for it but there's still a, a lengthy process a feasibility report plan that has to be put into place a 30-day notice then there has to be an ex, uh, an agreement with the age of four agencies so if there was to be anything it would be 2021 uh, and uh, three agencies have signed on uh, the four, four agencies submitted which is Foss Park District Lake Bluff Park District for this this pilot project uh, Glencoe Park District and City of Evanston and so um, we've had newer board members come on so we're hoping I need to really introduce it to them more and the board will have to take a position whether they want to move forward or not with this project but so. The, so the idea is the the Army Corps would be the body to guarantee that there's no PCB. that is correct and then the four agencies have met together to say we'd like some additional testing as well good good <laughs> <laughs> So I have to say it's an uncomfortable prospect mm -hmm. for some of us. Yes. I, I, um, I, I'm sure it will be debated. Uh, we all, there's a lot of people who've been involved with it and it's been tested to the best of its ability and, and they feel good. It's the outer harbor, not the inner harbor. And so, uh, but I think there needs to be community meetings. And so I just have to catch the board up to speed on, on all the intricate details of it Larry if you're gonna ask a question please come to the microphone so that people can hear you not for us but for the, the audience, audience. Sure. I just wanted Ron to expand on the term Waukegan Harbor you just mentioned our outer harbor but the sand is coming from north to south uh, Ron where will the sand be coming from Well, right now it's it's being held up on. It's it would have to get dredged from the outer harbor, so far outside. I don't have a map here, so I'd be glad to send it to you. So and send it to the committee. It's on our website, actually. It's not from the bottom. It's not from the right. That is correct. So right now there's a lot of it. Just it's it's sitting there. It's and so, um, but some of it's dredged. Um, so I don't have all the details, it's very technical. So what would happen is with these community meetings, you would have the Army Corps out being able to answer all the technical questions. So it's very, it's, look, it's complicated. So, but we have maps on our website on exactly where and where it's coming from and all, all the, the data and all the information from the Corps. Great. LakeBluffParkDistrict.org? Uh, yes, that is correct and you can go to the Sunrise Park and Beach page. Great. So if you're interested, we have the cleanup days and then we have the Friends of Lake Bluff Parks that are doing a great job. So. Super, That's awesome, that's great. And then I'd only like to, if there's no more questions, at least put a plug in for Lebola, is that uh, we've been doing a great job around the area, uh, Green Bay Road and 176 and uh, looks great. We're very pleased from a park district standpoint, and um, so we always great partnership with them, and it's been great to see that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Forward to hearing. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda, Labola. Nice lead-in. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Larry McCotter. I live at 1014 Foster Avenue in Lake Bluff. And uh, I wanted to just give an overview of Lobola's activities and uh, achievements, uh, focusing on what's been happening in the last year or so. Um, 
Ron just mentioned a, a project that we've put a ton of energy into, and that's uh, what we call Rockland Wetlands. It's uh, Green Bay in 176. Some people call it the Turkey Fen. Um, that's poetic. Frog Corner. It's the Frog Pond, okay. the, the one where you have to like roll your winds up so they don't deafen you. And uh, that's something we began work on about 12 years ago. Uh, it had been so full of buckthorn that you drive by and uh, I don't know how many of you have been here for that long, but you drive by and you had no idea what was going on in there and you did not hear frogs. And we've been uh, asked recently, well, why the pond was still there, why didn't we hear frogs? And uh, recent research tells us that the presence of buckthorn and chemicals emitted by buckthorn uh, lead to mortality of tadpoles. And so there really were no frogs there until we did a, jo a complete job of removing the buckthorn, which is a realization we've made very recently. And um, you know, we're trying to spread the, spread the word to other people with ponds in town that if they want singing Western chorus frogs in harmony, um, that they should get rid of their buckthorn. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to uh, mention some of um, some Lake Bluff Open Lands board members, uh, particularly who uh, put their heart and soul and a whole bunch of time into land management for Lake Bluff Open Lands. First and foremost, Bill Nordeen. Bill, if you could raise your hand. <laughs> Mr. Buckthorn. Mr. Buckthorn. <laughs> 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 Al Treffs, our treasurer, and both of whom are, have been on the board for eons, and our vice president, Ben Miller, uh, really the heart of our land management crew, along with our one employee, Cody, um, one full-time employee. I uh, should mention that Sophie Twitchell is also a board member. Uh, if unless I outed you and you have a problem with that, <laughs> I think okay. they all knew. Okay, and uh, over the long term, Lake Bluff Open Lands has uh, put an immense amount of resources into the restoration of of part of Lake Bluff that is now protected by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Uh, we used to call it the Skokie Preserve but now it is officially known by its protected name, which is the Skokie River Prairie Land and Water Reserve. Whoa. Don't bother writing all that down. <laughs> uh, Land and Water Reserve is a, uh, a, a level of protected, uh, it describes a level of protection by the IDNR, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. You've got nature preserves and land and water reserve. And, and so the Skokie is, essentially a junior nature preserve. We're working on it uh, through the elimination of invasive species and planting of native uh, prairie, wet prairie, wetland species. Uh, we're improving the quality, the, the number of native species in there has gone from about seven in 1994, when we began clearing, to over 200 today. Uh, and for the most part, those species sprang forth from the seed bank. They were there from decades ago in the era before buckthorn. And they've simply been able to be exposed to sun, germinate, thrive, and like 200 native species is really something. And we're, I think, well on the way at some point. There are actually seven privately owned lots in that, in that area, and between efforts by Lake Bluff Open Lands and the village to acquire those lots, once that's done, all the roadways and those private lots can, the roadways can be vacated, the entire thing can be unified in the land and water reserve, and we can then pursue nature preserve status. Uh, so that's the 35 acres just south and west of the water plant. South of that is the Lake County Forest Preserve's Oriole Grove. And uh, you've got the, the 
railroad line that sort of curves over Green Bay Road and then meets up at 41. That divides Oriole Grove from Lake Forest Open Lands Nature Preserves. And so between Deer Path and 176, we've got a greenway, a corridor there that is, is, is and is improving its capability to support a, a vast number of, of native wildlife. Uh, so that's, that's a very cool thing. Nobody sees it. <laughs> we spend a lot of time restoring um, over 200 acres of Lake Bluff natural areas and nobody sees it. And that's why we're so thrilled with uh, the work that's happening at Rockland Wetlands, right there at the busiest intersection in town so people can see what happens when we do the thing that we've been talking about for uh, you know, 35 years. Um, another activity that's concurrent with uh, our clearing at Rockland Wetlands is at the Prairie Preserve at the west end of Belfaray Drive, mm -hmm. west of Green Bay. Uh, nobody knows about it, but it's, it's extremely high quality. It's a, it, the, the residents do. It's a remnant prairie, which means it was never bulldozed. It, nobody ever put drain tiles beneath it. They didn't plant corn or wheat. It was lightly grazed by cows. But there are plants in there that may be hundreds of years old because they, they, you know, who knows how long prairie plants live. We don't seem to know. Um, but that's uh, a, a tremendous amount of work has been going on there to expand the prairie area and a wetland that comes right up to the golf course uh, that had been filled with Phragmites, a horrible weed. If you don't know it, you will. Um, it's <laughs> coming to a natural area near you, uh, especially if it's wet. But um, those are our, our current projects. We would love to become involved with the project that this board has endorsed unanimously twice, the 176 project, um, that, uh, the, the map for which is part of your website uh, and, and minutes for our agenda for this meeting. I did notice that the area proposed for clearing by Lake Bluff Open Lands is goes further west than, than the map that you're on, that has that you're on the website right now right now you go far uh, that map shows clearing as far west as mariani we're proposing to go to municipal drive where, where the water tower is where some of the biggest baddest uh fragmites are well well fragmites but you've got uh dead ash yeah. di dying ash elm and cottonwood that you know, our vision is to clear that on both sides of the river so you've got a grassy or wildflowery view of the river looking north. And, and I think that's going to be the star of the show. And just wanted to be clear because we're, the village is comparing, I hope they're comparing apples to apples, but if they're going by the map there, they're comparing apples to oranges in terms of our proposed costs versus what they're looking at. Um, and possibly bidding out. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, one thing we do is manage our, uh, our properties using controlled burns. We've done this since the beginning of our work in Lake Bluffs Natural Areas. Uh, well, actually, the, the Carolyn Gets Wetlands Preserve was established in 1981. But uh, we started doing controlled burns uh, once the Skokie began clearing, and that's 1995. And we have, uh, we have some 13, 14 managed areas in Lake Bluff, and we burn probably six or seven of them on a regular basis. And that is, uh, it's a way of restoring the conditions that the plants evolved with and disadvantaging uh, invasive species, particularly woody invasive species, so that the sun-loving, herbaceous uh, wildflowers and grasses uh, have the advantage in spring. They're not shaded out by buckthorn, honeysuckle, various types of dogwood. Uh, and that's something that we've done uh, safely. We've got a great track record. It's something uh, the Lake County Forest Preserve does. We do it in coordination with them, and, and um, it's an essential part of natural area restoration for us. Um, 
we've been working on the beach prairie since it was con the the beach area that we're that Ron was talking about reconstructing was constructed in 1985. So, uh, and we've been talking about replacing the rotten timbers that are there since uh, the park district closed off the stairs 18 months ago. So that was due for replacement and really the high wa lake levels maybe did us a favor by wiping it out and allowing the park district to make an insurance claim um, because it, it, it was due and uh, that prairie is beautiful, diverse, part of the lakefront experience I think. So it, and, it wasn't damaged? No, in fact the prairie and the sand prairie that projects eastward from you know, all the way to the water, they prove the point that deep-rooted, fibrous-rooted native plants provide erosion control. And turf grass doesn't do it. Turf grass has the roots four inches deep. But where the sand has been worn away, you can see these like massive root systems of the plants that we've had in there for, you know, some 15 years. Um, so that's, that's another, we think, very cool thing. Um, Lake Bluff Open Lands has work days throughout the school year. We, um, we constantly make use of armies of Lake Forest High School science students, uh, Saturdays uh, once a month and Sundays once a month. And just to close out, if I haven't over, overstayed my welcome, uh, I wanted to name the 14 Labola preserves that no one knows of. Well, they know of 12 of them. They know of two of them, but um, here we go. The Carol and Getz Wetlands, Ravine Park, mm -hmm. Moffat Woods, which is at Moffat and Lakeland where the two rows of hemlock go east. Uh, Keller Ravine, the little house at Witchwood and Moffat. The Prairie Preserve on Belfaray, Skokie River Prairie, Skokie River Prairie Land and Water Reserve, uh, Oriole Grove, which is the name of the forest preserve south of that, our beach prairies, Lake Genevieve, which is north on Green Bay a mile. You turn right on Bay Shore, and where that ends is a little lake and surrounding beautiful oak woodland that, um, if you know George Morton from the... Uh, as a high school science teacher for a generation, he manages that nobly. Uh, the train station uh, prairie north of the train station parking lot, the east-west bike paths right on either side of Green Bay on the south side of uh, 176, uh, Rockland wetlands that we've discussed, and Dwyer Woods, two cleared woodland areas at Lake Bluff Elementary School. We have zillions of acres preserved at Crabtree Farm. Everything you can see that's, that's open is preserved by a conservation easement either held by Lake Bluff Open Lands or Open Lands, as in Chicago Open Lands, or Lake, Fo Lake Forest Open Lands. Uh, and we have several other conservation easements throughout town. Any questions? Do you have a map of all of those? We do. Well, maybe you ought to have a, no, no, I don't need Not to have a map. Not with me, but. No, I was just. Ah. Oh, perfect, ah. downstairs. Yeah, the by pamphlets. the front desk, there are pamphlets there. Maybe for the 125th, we should have a scavenger hunt or a factoid mm -hmm. map tour. That would be a great idea. Great. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not gonna run it, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Larry. You know, Larry, hearing you makes me think it might make sense. I don't know who, who technically owns the wetlands, Rockland Wetlands? Park District. Park District. Too bad Ron's gone. But, it, I mean, it would be nice to have a sign that says Rockland Wetlands or something that acknowledges it'll that make it's it not easier enough to find this is how it's supposed to look. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, Sophie, I, I, I answered the wrong question. Oh. Um, Come back to the come preserve. back to the mic though. Oh no. Um, that is the park district. Uh, Rockland Wetlands is a complicated mixture of village and park district ownership. 
Uh, if it's right next to the road, it's IDOT. Mm -hmm. If it's just in from the road, it's typically the village. Mm -hmm. uh, as it goes west, it's all village, like from the road in for about 40 feet. Well, maybe somewhere where it's village or park district, we could suggest. Well, maybe it's just named Rockland yeah. and, and, the, and the contributing entities are just sort of a byline or don't exist as a because mm -hmm. it's yeah. a treasure it would be good to acknowledge you know yeah, since it's so visible is, signage is definitely a, a, a weak spot for us so we need to blow our own horn a little louder but it's a little tricky when it's not when you don't own it so um, well, but maybe if, we if could encourage managed by like if the skokie preserve has a legitimate sign and it's, it's carbon and wood and it's big okay Managed by Lake mm -hmm. okay. We'll take a look because I know there's the one at Skokie Wetlands. I know, I think Moffat Woods actually has one of your group's it better ones, sign. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Just because it's yeah. so public. And the accessibility now is greatly enhanced by getting rid of the popcorn. So even mm -hmm. walking and approaching what we've now cleared is so much more manageable. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to approach it, right? It makes yes. it as a as a resident or bystander, <coughs> you want to approach it where you didn't. No, it's not a question. As a as a resident or bystander, you want to approach these places now, where before it was like why. <laughs> well, and in the spring, it has crazy amounts of shooting star, yeah. like crazy amounts. Yeah. Those were there. They mm -hmm. were there. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, uh, the other thing we should probably mention is we're talking with the Rotary Club right now to plant 125 native trees mm. in that area. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Coming up with the mixture and the amount of money they're donating to you know, sort of maximize it. Bill, is so that at is, Rockland or the as, whole? As we're currently talking about doing it at Rockland. So we'll have a plan for it. Nice. That's as close as I'll commit. Great. Okay. If I could pay, hammer the point home, part of this plan that was uh, drafted by Tesca specifically calls for the removal of invasives in this area, which has been accomplished. And this planting would be our start to phase two of replanting it. So, great. The plan is moving forward. And I just think that's worth knowing. That's awesome. Okay. Great. That's And if we could well, just okay. get more yeah. places on board with getting rid of the invasives, that would be a big deal. Yeah, that would be great. Well, it would be great for some of us who are fans of the Western chorus frogs and, you know, race to call or text friends as soon as we hear them for the first time in spring to hear them in more places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the bowl is... They're in the Scopey Reserve. Mm -hmm. We opened up two wetlands in there in the last... Mm -hmm. And uh, they're a little shy. I know. They will quiet down when you approach. When them. you approach, yeah. yeah. I, I might have, tr somebody I know might have tried. <laughs> <laughs> that was the DOG. <laughs> well, the bowl is an incredible asset for our teeny tiny little village. So hats off to all you guys for everything that you do. Very good. Thank you. Okay, village staff report. Um, no, no additional report. Okay, members report. Would you like I have a report. And actually, I suppose I do have a, a logistical issue to make to bring up as well, but you should make your report first. They, okay. they dovetail. Well, um, the chicken cam is live. <laughs> we have a live feed, yes. hopefully. Oh yeah, look at this technology at oh. its finest. Is it, are they, what's happening? <laughs> um, of course the video popped out. Oh, sorry, I thought that was the, I thought Larry touched on 176. I think that's our sorry. topic. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, sorry. Although, was... although the chickens are very exciting. Yes, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, not too much of an update to offer. I mean, as this group suggested in December, um, we're working to get can't take this seriously, to get, um, you know, prices that can be budgeted 
um, in, in future years to complete the, the, prep, the plans TESC outlined. Mm -hmm. So whether that's um, through a partnership with Lobola or bid out, um, I think we reported back in December that um, at this point the, you know, the resource ask there is more um, than we can um, award to someone without bidding it. Right. Um, and so there's what is a that, process. What is that threshold? Um, the threshold would be twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and so, uh, again, no matter where that project goes, we need to have um, for whoever does it. We need to have budgetary numbers um, that we can set aside money for to okay. turn a plan into reality. Right. So, brief update. So we don't know when we'll get that. Um, so we're finalizing our budget usually that fourth Monday in April. And I think, I, I don't have it in front of me, I think that letter calls for um, you know, a six, eight week turnaround by the end of March. So we would have those um, to review with time to be able to slot them in. Okay, and then we can make sure it's updated as Larry referenced that the Buckthorn removal would ex extend further. So we make sure that when a bid went out, it went All the that way. whole distance. Yeah, I'd have to look at that. I think uh, I was kind of thinking about the, a different way, which would be, you know, it, it sounds like if we have Lobola proposing a longer area and, and we're looking at a shorter area, I mean, Why you can go either way, go? right? We would extend longer or depending on where the, the numbers came up at it, it might make more sense to ask a bull if we can, you know, pull their area in shorter to what we can afford to support. Yeah, the only trick with that, though, is that Buckthorn spreads incredibly easily and quickly. So if we don't try to Eradicate get all of it, we're going to get it right back. Just a, you know. Just a thought. Would it matter who owns it as to what we do with it? I mean, we own most of that strip right there along the um, along the roadway. So I, I think as already described well, um, along the roadways either right away, which we more or less control, even if it's abandoned or, or our property, IDOT's close to the roadway, and then the park district starts usually in depth behind that. But I mean, um, the map that we're using now um, does it encompass encompass everything that we actually own and are able to do things with, or is some of the land owned by somebody else that we needed to coordinate quickly with them? That's what I was asking. Yeah, let me um, pull that up real quick. Golf course. Can I interrupt? Yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, in terms of the bug farm, I think something that needs to be considered is a good chunk of the bug farm that exists along 176 can currently be cut with a brush saw. That makes cutting significantly easier. Add a year or two to that, and you're looking at doing it with chainsaws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doubles the amount of labor involved in it. It's also significantly more dangerous. So if you're looking at budgeting, Sit maybe up. shoot yourself in the foot by putting it off. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I would have, if you could authorize $20,000, is it conceivable to authorize $20,000 of the work for Lobola? to go from, say, Eva Terrace, X number of feet, and we do it this year. And you're ahead of the game. And next year, $20,000, we draw another number of feet. Especially when you consider that our project has been on the board here for decades. <laughs> the job has gotten more complicated in three years. Yeah. Because it's growing. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't recommend the village budget. I'll, I'll relay that to the village administrator and we'll keep working through this is the yeah. best I can tell you. What What is on the budget right now? Do you recall? I don't. As far as? Um, for this project. 176. So there is no village budget really in, in place past um, May 1 of this year. So we budget in bienniums. So we're in the second year of a biennial. We're about to, we're in the process of creating the budget from May 1 of 20 to May 1 of, tw or to April 30th of 2022. Okay, so we had nothing folded in because this came along before this current biennial 
There was we there was money here to uh, create the study. There was yeah. um, a, a chunk of money that um, could have been used for a few things. At one point, it was I think we we're looking at okay. using it to start some of these eradication activities, and the scale started expanding. Uh -huh. um, and we turned that towards um, the planning piece of it. Right. I think okay. it's a fair. The other, okay. the other I thing I add to Thank this you. is, you give us X number of dollars, $20,000, okay? We do $20,000 worth of work. We can do it cheaper than a contractor because we do it with volunteers and interns, okay? The other thing is, that's $20,000 that was into our budget, and we don't spend it on parties, we put it right back in the village. So you get $20,000 up front, and you got twenty thousand dollars coming back to the village. It seems to me like a win-win. Well, I hope you put a little bit towards the bonfire. I mean, that's yeah. fun community event. Yeah. One party is acceptable. We raise money at those, so yes, I mean it just counts. Yeah. Where do you think the popcorn goes? Yeah. <laughs> I figured you guys would start pressing it into those signs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a couple questions about the, the bid process you said right now in December. Uh, one, as far as the scope of work, I think you answered that question. It did not include towards the river and the municipal building. I mean, I wouldn't even. Yeah, I wouldn't even wouldn't even call it a bid process. I've got the map in front of me now, so and I think to answer both your question and member um, Bishop. bishops, I'm there. I'm, I, I've been working with Leslie the whole time I've been with this village. Um, uh, you know, my Kansas City Chiefs won last night, so I'm a little sleep deprived. I, I hope you all. Um, it is the full depth of the village's land, and maybe a little bit going tailing into the, the park district's land, but it doesn't go all the way back in into the course. Um, it's the width, mm -hmm. I think, from Eva Terrace, which of course is part of the, the, um, the wetlands that's already been worked on, um, going west towards um, right about the, um, the, the edge between Mariani and the, uh, the Jawa detention pond. Mm -hmm. Um, now, as far as a bidding process, I mean, no bidding process has been held, right? I think my understanding, you, you tell me, Larry, because I haven't been in these conversations, is you and um, the village administrator have been looking at costs in this area. Yes. Yeah. And I understood that, that there was a bidding out process in, underway, but do I understand you to say that it has happened? Or I'm, we haven't published a bid. I'm not aware of any bidding process. I mean, yeah. you know, if we were talking about project, um, maybe our public works guys yeah. okay. asked around. Our, our proposals but. have included a scope of work generally that the village can use. But importantly, because we all know that if you turn your back <coughs> on Buckthorn for a season, you regret it. Our proposal includes, you know, follow up. For the years of, of buffer and re sprouts, if you miss any. Mm, and you know, what the bolo does is manage natural areas. So you can imagine that for the next 10 years, we'll be after the little, not just re sprouts, but sprouts mm -hmm. that come from any of the billions of seeds on the ground right now. So mm -hmm. That's what we do. Our fear is that you know, we bring in a contractor that simply comes in with a chainsaw cuts it down, and then we're dealing with all the re sprouts afterwards. If no follow-up applications of herbicide or cutting is done, we might as well just rearrange the deck chairs in the Titanic. That's really all we can accomplish. Okay, good to know. Duly noted. Okay. okay. Um, members report. I'll go first because my chickens are being featured right now. Um, they are Happy four of them are, four of them have been laying with regularity. One has not, um, although it's kind of hard to know which one's actually in the box at what time and doing what, because sometimes they hop in, all three of them in one box, so go figure. Um, but anyways, the eggs are small, uh, a little larger than a quail egg right now. And I mean, like this big. It was very gray for very many days. That's so. true. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> yeah, and so that's that's them. Um, is this a public webcam that we can access? Um, thank you. Yes. Thanks. Uh, 
loosely defined as public. Maybe, maybe Glenn, you could put it, um, the feed up on the website for the chicken bee pilot program. <laughs> maybe I can. <laughs> okay. And is that like a little Buddha in there? Yes, it I is. Was just wondering. Does that, that help? Yes. Well, and they also have a xylophone, um, oh. and they'll they'll hit on it. Ding 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 ding. Really? Yeah. Okay. Crazy. When they want to eat, keep the no, box not away. when they want to eat. Um, they do have an uh, they have a not an electric door, a battery, a, a solar door, and uh, so it uh, at when the sun goes down, mm -hmm. they go in and it shuts them out of their run. Okay. And and closes them here. But it's constant action. You can be on this at three in the morning and they are still doing this. Oh my God, they don't sleep? Well, they do. They <laughs> all get up on the roosting bar, but then, you know, then one of them will just sort of turn and then they'll, oh, yeah, okay. anyways. It's like so puppies. Um, it's, it's, I have to say it's pretty rewarding stuff, especially when they're laying. Nice. Um, and they do talk to us. I know they're okay. Very nice. <laughs> just making sure you're looking. <laughs> yeah, they you do talk. Personalities. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, great. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with the prairie gentian on the on the uh, cover. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So, anyways, that's I highly encourage people to uh, get into the chip, chicken thing because it's fun. It looks awesome. I'm so glad that they're lovely. laying now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Did anyway. you end up getting a wooden egg, or did it? Did I the golf ball do the trick? <laughs> golf ball did the trick. Okay. And um, Maybe imagine my like surprise when I actually, when I actually looked in there and I was like, oh my god, I think it's an egg. Oh no, no, it's an it's a golf ball. Uh, Robin had done that because yeah. I have uh, job share, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so is yeah. it a lot of work? Uh, so yes and no. I mean, when it was, uh, they were out of town when it was really, really cold and I was the one chipping the ice out of the waterer and, um, oh. yeah, but, um, now there's an infrared light in there that keeps it a little warm. Ooh, we could have an egg. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. No, they egg. turn around. They don't lay that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, the you would know better than I would. I yeah, know. I think yeah. the egg laying actually happens in the afternoon. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Or sometimes overnight. No, the, the, the um, no, because you. Yes, I think it does during the sun sunlight. Ooh, okay. that might be the golf ball there. Oh, it looks golf ballish. Yeah, it's white, very mm -hmm. white. So, anyways, yeah, that's it. Wow, it's very exciting. Cool. Yeah. So this makes a nice segue into, I guess, a staff report and then a little bit of logistics for next time around. Um, so staff report, I am disappointed to report that there is a very, very fat fox somewhere in Lake Bluff now. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, no, our, not eating our chickens. Eating our chickens. Whose chickens? Oh. Um, the drowned oh, family the out there on Lincoln the Avenue. Oh, Got them all. Kidding. Got them all. All of them? Cleaned house, yeah. Because he had them, because they were free ranging. No, I think they. Um, we didn't talk ahead. about it at length. I didn't want to traumatize her, but I think they got into the enclosure, or it got into the enclosure. Where mm -hmm. do they live again? Oh, on Lincoln. Um, yeah, Lincoln Avenue, on over Terrace. on the West Terrace. I forget the exact Ooh. address. Five, There's 12, a fox. There, there, is, there a is a fox. fox. Couple. We love seeing the fox. Yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> well, it's and a very happy fox right now. It could be a coyote too, couldn't it? I don't know. Um, We've had a lot of wildlife sightings. We did have a, we had a raptor come into the yard. Yes, <laughs> I have one sitting on my uh, chair. Mm -hmm. On my patio every afternoon. Mm -hmm. Do you have a bird feeder? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's watching. He's waiting for lunch to arrive. Yeah. Yeah, well, someone sent several several fox in the, in a bald eagle picture too. Where? Oh. Um, in Lake Bluff? Center Avenue. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. So, really? yeah, I don't know what it was doing in town in fish. January. Yeah. Well, but fish. Or chickens. Lake yeah. Michigan. A lot of options. When the water's open. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, 
for rewilding. I think this would take quite a bit of energy to get in, um, but I could be wrong. So um, those, how many chickens did they lose? Four or six? I believe four. four. It was four. Mm. Um, that's a mess. Possibly, I know they intended to have four. I think they might have been down to three at okay. this particular moment. One of those, though. So, so do they, they plan up to restock? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like they do. Yeah. Good. Um, so when is our when is our deadline for re re um, well for new new people? No hard deadline. You can come in when you like. We it is time for us to do the those couple quick little renewal meetings sure. and we wanted to look yeah. at just with how some of the scheduling worked out we wanted to look at moving forward our march meeting a little bit and trying to do that at the end of this month okay that's okay. fine with me so i don't know if you guys have calendars ready we can do this later if you like but either the wednesday the 26th is probably the natural date um, we would also have some availability on um, thursday the, the 27th so essentially, we'll just move our March regular meeting up a few days, um, just because I think there's some worse availability there from what I'm hearing, and also, technically, you know, it, it would be a day over then. So may the, as well. The 27th. Did you offer a different another date too? The 26th would probably be our first choice, just in that it's a Wednesday, normal day for meetings here at the village. Um, we can do the 27th as well if that works. Of February, for right? Yeah, February. So the end I'm, of this month. I'm only available the 27th. Yeah, me too. The 27th. Not. A, I'm not available. Okay. I, I can do. I have nothing planned. I can do either. <laughs> okay. We will. I think two beats one, unfortunately. So we'll check mm -hmm. with Brian. Is Brian Renner. can be there. I think we'll aim for the 27th okay. again. All that'll happen is we'll invite in. Um, one of our chicken operators will invite in uh, Ms. McAfee, will invite in uh, Mrs. Drown. Uh, we'll send out the letters to neighboring properties and we'll see who comes up. Cool. Um, I haven't talked with anyone with new interest in chickens lately. I did actually talk to someone today who we'll see might be talking to our first um, bee Eats. pilot person. Mm, yeah, it was great. Yay. Local nursery. Um, person at uh, Chalet Nursery, I think, is working with someone here in town. Nice. So, we'll see if that well, comes Well, Gordon through. is offering some sort of intro to beekeeping mm -hmm. classes, mm -hmm. so you, that might Coming up. some interest. Right. Yes, and they did just have the Pollinators movie right. on mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. So I wanted to go back to the Lobola stuff for a sec if if we send it out to bid what's that bid turnaround time look like i'm just thinking about summer and when they have interns and students and all that sure um we haven't planned it out i mean something straightforward like this you leave it out on the street two to three weeks you leave a week at the end to line up okay. with the next board being to award it so monthly time but what the worst, wasn't our, our plan was to try to figure out what the whole project would cost and then a strategy for how how to chop it Inflate. up and and, and that whole costing part i mean not for the whole length but at least that eva terrace to the corner length mm -hmm. that's been signed and approved that's less than twenty thousand dollars and so um that same team maybe you I mean for the buckthorn removal piece is less than twenty the design work, so that would be costing for the oh. buckthorn removal piece if done at commercial rates, and then also sort of that phase two, the planting piece. Right. Um, that's okay. out with um, Tesca and Cliff Miller now, um, to, as of a few days ago, to start putting that work together. Okay. Uh, probably could have communicated that better now that you asked that. No, now I'm confused. So, so they're, they're beefing up what their proposal would be to do that? Is that what that was? They, they never made a proposal to do that work, right? What it was sort of broader them, brush strokes. Yeah, we asked them to do design work. So they, okay. they had the original map. I think I have it, this exhibit I right here. That was the question that I was trying to ask about what we had budgeted. And now I remember we rerouted it through to work on the design planning to, right. to move that forward because that seemed like an open space that we could move 
forward into. Yeah, but, but also, Glenn was saying, wanted to know, sort of get our arms around the whole cost. Right. So that then, because he was saying we don't want to go, well, it's 50 now, well, here it's 20, and here, you right. know, just don't want it to creep. Want to know, sort of, here, here's the whole thing, and then a strategy for how, right? That's. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is, you know, whenever we, how do I phrase this? Um, th this project is sort of unique among a lot of other capital projects in that it's always sort of been a question mark, right? Like there's mm -hmm. huge differences in cost based on how who's we design doing the this. Work. Yeah, right. and who's doing the work. Um, if I'm putting a pipe in the ground, I can predict with some certainty how much the pipe will cost without mm -hmm. looking at it. Um, so um, so yeah. on. So um, Cliff Miller, they're putting together a more refined as opposed to the broad brushstrokes, more refined, because they were talking about the split rail fence, and so they're getting more. Within this detail. red box area, which we've already had surveyed out a few months ago, it would be construction level drawings, and as part of preparing those, there would be a, an estimate of cost. Okay, right. If that makes sense. Can so that, would that be piece. Clearing and planting and. So it includes the clearing piece. Yeah. Okay. But it I'm doesn't sorry, include the design slightly level. remedial. No, we're, we're, all, we're all talking it doesn't our memories. Include, it does not, to Larry's point this evening, it does not include going from the west end of the rectangle to the public works building. Right. And so therefore, yeah, that, that section there. Right. Mm -hmm. What we heard tonight was we should contemplate the clearing as part of the the whole design we should take clearing as far as we can west well and i think his, yeah. mm -hmm. i think their other point too though was that and maybe i'm not right but that the bid they had given was for the whole area so just to know right wasn't that what he was saying I mean, that's so that, part of the point of saying you know so they would be less um, if we, it were shorter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so lower. asking us, were we comparing a bid for the whole area to a bid just for this right, exactly. rectangular right. space? Right, yeah. But I think okay. to be most efficient, it would make sense to go all the way to the public works building for the clearing. Whether the design and construction drawings go beyond that this year or next doesn't matter to me personally, but I think the the point of being able to get the eradication done sooner, like in one fell swoop, mm -hmm. makes a whole lot of sense. Especially after hearing you could do it with a brush saw. Yeah, yeah, yes. buzz buzz saw. Because then the high schoolers chainsaw. can really do it. It's the yeah. chainsaw. Right. <laughs> Different liability. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess my hope is just that we can let them loose to go in there and <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get started. Because um, mm -hmm. they're obviously ready and. Yeah. You know. Great. Good to hear. Anybody else have a, a member report? Only that um, as far as the beach goes, I think as a, as a board, we should be very much pushing for them to do as much as possible and yeah. not do it in little parts. Having experience doing this on Lake Erie um, and a quarter mile of the lake, um, we started doing it in the 90s and did it thinking that it was a forever project basically. And it, in, in the spring with the 18 foot waves, it picked up four ton rocks and threw them around like pebbles. Wow. So we just finished the second um, installment. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, bringing in this huge bulldozer and cranes and everything. But the, the one part of the a lot that was not done properly in the 90s, they lost 20 feet of their bluff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in one day. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think that there's any way you can say, don't put the money in it. And what we're finding there, which I'm sure is true here too, is that 10 years ago, it took us two years to get the permits. Yeah. And last summer, it took us no time to get the permits. They mm -hmm. just said, you've got to do it. Yeah. And I think the whole Great Lakes are feeling that way. So now's That's our to time point. to 
get going on it in that way. Yeah. Well, and when when they sit and when they made the comment about uh, <clears throat> the the waiting, maybe we just put a Band-Aid on it and and hope. And you <laughs> just think, oh my God, you're going to lose that much more land and money that you put in in the first place. So right. yeah. you really need to do just it and do it away. right and and kind of get mm -hmm. your community behind you. Mm. Yeah. And I imagine it would be really hard to get state or federal money with everyone on the Great Lakes looking for the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wonder. It seems like our senators should all get together, like they did, what, two years ago for the Great Lakes Alliance. Alliance. A restoration. Yes. It is, it it is a collective issue, for sure. It is. And mm -hmm. It's and happening in Canada. It's hard to say that we can do it alone. Mm -hmm. right. Well, it's tricky because the you know, federal budget keeps, each time it's come out, it's been as sort of zeroing out the, yeah. the small, Great small, Lakes. Small, small, small. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I had a really um, small thing. Do you know if, I, when I was on the other boards here, people would hand out bottled water when we came to the meetings. I know we all bring our own, but do we still hand out bottled water here in the, for meetings? On request? I was wondering if we couldn't invest in some paper cups and pitchers and just put a pitcher glass, around glass and have, have a few, well, who's going to wash the glasses? I mean, just even those wax paper, anything that would not be plastic and we wouldn't be handing out plastic bottles here in the village hall where we're trying to... Oh, we just don't pass out water. And they can bring their own bottles the like go some. Faster. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. I agree have, with it. You know, pictures of water for people that want water and. Mm -hmm. What community just went bagless? A lot. A lot. One's, yeah, going, no, so one's going styrofoam free. <clears throat> that, was that Chicago was thinking about going styrofoam free? Yeah, but somebody else, I, th I want to say somebody close, just went bagless. It might have been Evanston because they're, they were thinking about it. I don't know if they actually did. I don't know. Highland Park's always. I can tell you I, I just got a bag at Evanston. Okay. For free? Uh, I, th I think you pay your seven cents. Or seven cents. That, that was probably the same thing Chicago did. I will say on a similar report, um, a little bit to my embarrassment, but glad we could correct it. So 100% um, recycled paper. Check. We made that change. Thank you. Not oh, sure awesome. how it how it unhappened, but it is it is rehappened. Oh, perfect. Excellent. So, good. Slow, the slow, steady march Every of progress. Step. That's good. Every step. Yeah. Yeah. So a few of us also just as a, a point of observation, a few of us toured this. Um, the passive house. Oh, yeah, the passive mm -hmm. house that um, was really fabulous. Um, I, I you brought, this we brought the fire. I, I always toured it when it was under construction. Yeah. Oh, you should see these cabinets in here. Oh, my God. Actually, <laughs> I really wanted to see yeah, the it's, toilet. It's <laughs> beautiful. I got there so late. And at the same time, the technology and um, application of it is amazing. And they. They were asked, um, the builders and architect were asked how much this cost to build this home from scratch compared to building a new home in, you know, standard, standard practices. And they said that, you know, from a couple of examples, they could say 4 to 7 percent higher. 4 um, percent? Yeah. That's because they, you're not using a number of materials that you would be using. And then, of course, the energy costs going down the line will save you significantly. Um, and there was also a side conversation that started about retrofitting, because many of us live in old right. homes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's not realistic that we're going to go tear down all of our homes and build from scratch. So that is also something. That would something not be very sustainable. That would not be sustainable. <laughs> and you know, I think did about propose that to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> That would be awesome. But obviously, you know, this is something that, you know, if you've traveled around Europe a little bit, you see these beautiful old areas that are hundreds of years old, but they're also living um, in ways that are a little bit more sustainable in some places than we are. So it, 
it would be very interesting to pay a little bit more attention to these concepts as a village. It also might be really fascinating to have those architects come in and speak I agree. to us about different building options. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I did speak to him about uh, doing that. Tom, Tom wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom Bassett. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and Eric Barton Barton we and the talk about suggesting yeah. that building permits for green, um, green design homes be um, fast tracked or reduced fees? Yeah, incentivize is that, it somehow. Is that, I mean, I, I'm not in the building world. Is that us or is it Lake County? No, um, I think we were talking about That would about be it. us. That would be us, that yeah. So us. we do that um, today for. Um, might not have taken. I'll, I'll get it from you later. We do that today for our landmark structures, mm -hmm. historic structures that have been designated. So you can you can do it. So what do you mean? They, those get fast tracked? Or um, we don't do any fast tracking here in Lake Bluff, and so that we have less control over. Lake Forest does our permits, and so the good news is they oh, treat our right. permits the same as theirs. The bad news is they treat our permits the same, the same as theirs. Same. You get in the line, you stay in the line. Um, we control our fees, right? And so you can you can consent to that. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, that has a, a direct cost. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can do it. We do do it. Yeah. Yeah. I so think you do, so. What do you do for the like if you're a landmark bill or if you're going to restore it to landmark, whatever? If then if it's a reduced lead. Fee. If you go lead, right? We have a we have a no nothing. Nothing about. I thought we did. Nope. Well, I thought maybe we wanted. We that. would want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you look at it. I think sustainable design, which whatever form it takes, be it lead, be it living building, be it, I, I don't know, pass it, you know, Passive. whatever. Garden roofs, green roofs. Yeah. It, it is more expensive to retrofit, though, because, yeah, we did it to Silver Lead in, in an Ohio house because of my mm -hmm. husband's love of the house. And it was more expensive than tearing it down and rebuilding it. Great, great. <laughs> yeah. But but one of the things that they did do in this passive house that that you haven't been able to see or find is they went solar on a metal roof. Mm -hmm. Almost unheard of. On the western um, Yeah, the western side. side. Yes. But they are using a heat pump. That's interesting. Yes. So it doesn't really pass being a passive house because in the United States they lowered the standards because they said that the United States couldn't possibly do it. So the, re the real passive house standards were in Germany. And in the States, they said, well, we can't meet those standards ever. So they lowered it. So he consider they consider it passive house, but they have a heat pump in it, which they do use yeah. to heat the house up to a certain point, and then the house stays warm forever. And mm -hmm. Right now yeah. they were heating it with a tiny little Tiny. It was tiny. This tiny. little heater in the basement yeah. was heating the whole house at the time we visited, and it was cold that day. It was cold that it day. It was, yes. Yes, was really and there was impressive. there was conversation about some of the other homes that they had worked the on and how they did last year going into the, the polar house vortex. That we walked in was under construction. And, um, those homes like held there. up and held their heat, <clears throat> notwithstanding. They, they, they gave a couple of examples on how they worked through it. They told one to warm it up just in case, yeah. but all of them held on and they made held. it through. They made it through. Better than my house and the houses <laughs> that I was comparing to. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. that was, a, again, very interesting conversations and worthy of our consideration. And um, there are communities in, in our country who are mandating that um, that new builds go to these levels. These levels. One might be Berkeley, California, and the other is Boston. Well, no, Boston is con Boston is doing it with businesses. Um, there's a liberal enclave outside of Boston that has mandated it. But it's not a bad thing to look at, and we are Americans. We are. Well, they, I, I think the other thing is is that you have to in looking at this house. Looking at the window construction and the door construction. It's amazing. It's amazing and it's very European, mm -hmm. but it is not what we're used to seeing here. So we've got to get our head around, you know, a better clad window. Yes. 
style yes. that isn't the divided lights and we've got to embrace that as a community in order to allow for the sustainability or the passive exactly. to be yeah. to be there and unless we have the education uh, of the B building review bar board or architectural review or or even us saying true go for mm -hmm. it it's not going to happen. The people that are building it are really interesting. They're going to be my neighbors two doors away. Mm -hmm. But um, interestingly enough, they lived in Europe for a long time. Mm -hmm. You can tell. Oh, and yeah. so they're used to um, smaller yeah. rooms. Mm -hmm. So when we toured the house, I think that was one of my first um, impressions was. And, and, and no lot, fireplace. And a lot of the people brought it up that, oh, the bedroom, the master bedroom is small and the man said, well, it can hold a bed. And yes, it can. But that's something else that I think as, as Americans, we need to get used to the fact that maybe you don't need a bedroom the size of this room mm -hmm. or a bathroom the size of this room. Well, for the first time, and Marina, I bet you know this in your field, but for the first time ever, I think housing size, house, average house size has just gone down, just mm -hmm. nudged down a little bit. Yeah. for new builds in our country. But when I you think we're beginning to understand that. When you toured it, didn't you feel that it was smaller than most American homes? Inside I thought it was fabulously appointed. It was, yeah. so, was wonderful. Yeah, I, I got over the uh, size because of the fabulous appointments. Right, and the, I mean, the staircases were beautiful. Oh, the light beautiful. was fabulous, and those cabinets were beyond amazing. That was the kitchen. Yes. yes. No, the kitchen. And the staircase is just it's reclaimed hickory. It's beautiful. With skylights. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just a beautiful home. I mean, yeah. it's really beautiful. It is. Well, so, Glenn, I'd, I'd love to suggest that we look at either, since we can't expedite permits or, or something, it seems like Lake Bluff is more carrot than to. stick. So, <laughs> ways. Astute observation. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. you know, ways to, to incentivize. How do we make this look good? Yeah, I and the other thing I'd love to put on the table is, um, and I think we mentioned it, but sort of uh -huh. electric vehicle parking um, mm -hmm. and charging stage, didn't we talk about? Yeah, so, and I can give you a little bit of an update there. So, you know, as part of our budget that's underway now, we have a whole slew of different sustainability options in there. So bike racks are in there and a question mark for some of these um, landscaping, beautification, naturalization type projects. Um, we had um, EV charging stations was something we, we worked up mm -hmm. and there's um, a, a couple pauses to that. The first is for what you get, um, you know, it's about 15, 16,000 for two stalls, which is big. It's not bad, but that's mm. it's kind of a, a poor Poor cost return to compare to some of the other things that are proposed there. That's the entire bike rack project for comparison. Wow. And the second Does would it, be. Do you get money back from that at all? Because, you know, when you there go, you have There may be some to, revenue potential. Yeah, it was because, you know, there's different apps that tell you where they are. And so then you pay through the app. So then would whoever owns it get a piece of that? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just you don't could, know like how that works. Like an ATM machine? Thing. Not much. Sort of. The person who has the ATM machine gets a f the fees. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I just don't know, but that would make sense. The, the bigger thing, the reason we're, we're thinking to hang on for now would be, uh, we're speculating a bit, right, but recent legislature passed by um, the General Assembly contemplates municipalities getting grants for this. Nice. Oh. And <laughs> oh. w the next ComEd bill probably will have more of the same. And so, you know, it may be advantageous to, to hang on a little longer. That's certainly something we've been talking broke. about. <laughs> right. It's well, that would be great. I would just love to see that. Or priority parking for, um, you know, oh, efficient energy vehicles. efficient cars. Parents. I don't know. I, I roll my eyes on that. I don't know. I'm What's an energy efficient car and why does it need to get park parked closer? I don't know. I'm Whatever just, is the I'm just trying to think of incentives. Yeah. No, no, I meant. I'm just it's trying it. to think of incentives. Yeah, but why? I don't. I guess that always sort of struck me. Lake Forest does it at their city building, mm -hmm. the municipal building, yeah. reserved for fuel-efficient cars, and it's empty all the time. 
Yeah, how do you know if I your car there. meets the... Well, I drive yeah. a Tahoe. I'm pretty sure that it isn't. <laughs> right but, there with you. But mine might be. Yeah, exactly. I but I have, I have a flex fuel option that... Is that like the E85? Yeah. Is that is that Depends who you ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So anyways. If you're in Iowa, just trying to find yes, it is. incentives. The bike, more people more see it and think and then about it. We don't have to drive, so if, and then we don't have to worry about That's it. That's all good too. Mm -hmm. all good too. Yeah. So stay tuned on the the EV charging piece, but let's um let's see what we can I mean the incentives part is relatively Simple, so let me see um, when we pull together on it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay, good night, Brian. <laughs> good night, Brian. Have, uh, <laughs> take your Tamiflu. Yeah, you take your Tamiflu. Uh, do I have uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you for being patient. Beautiful thing. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, did you get all your homework done before you got here? Oh. I hope too.